What's going on, you pestilent, pud-pulling penis pilots? Welcome to Grunt Speak, not so. Live from the lair! Terrence Pop, Toxic Male, welcome to the show. Excellent. We have a new installment from our good friend with the Red Suppositories, Iron Riddle. All right! Yeah! <laughs> but I just felt like putting that one up there because it's a nice, compact little camo ass. You almost can't see it. But you know, the yoga pants, you know what they are, right? Wonder bras for your ass. That's absolutely <laughs> correct. They're hiding the devil's braille. <laughs> You're like, eh. why are you doing this? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. The first time that you get the uh, pre-nut clarity... When you're in the middle of coitus with a woman, yep, it's a sobering experience. You're like, what the hell am I doing here? Uh, Must run away. <laughs> you're like, uh-oh. <laughs> it would be even scarier if, you know, when you, she still had your wang and was chasing you with it. No, that'd be, you would die. That'd be even worse. You'd lose so much blood, you'd be finished. <laughs> If you are sick and tired of Hollywood's brainwashing in disguise and the insanity is just too much, we've got the answer for you. And it's completely free on Tubi. Not So Sane Entertainment presents their greatest hits complete with cyberpunk conspiracies, hilarious hotties, lady lawmen, zombie babies, and cameos by some familiar faces. You want to give them the right to vote? It's a right provided to them by the queen. Oh, f*** her, she's a whore. So begin your odyssey away from the dreck of Hollyweird and enjoy some good old-fashioned entertainment for a change. Links are in the Meat Gazer box. A friend of mine of 25 years when we met was a co-pilot for a small regional turboprop airline. One day, he met a cute flight attendant, and over time, they oh. began dating. All right, there we go. We've covered this in Working Man Survival Guide. Never dip your pen in the company ink well. Because once you do... I award you no points, and may God have mercy on your soul. You, you quite literally deserve what you get. Yeah. If you're going to do shit like that. You that might as so well just, just, just bend over for her attorney. Because that's... <laughs> this is <laughs> not the 1970s. Yeah, in the 70s and early 80s, that was a common thing. No. Nowadays, Not anymore. don't do it. 70s and 80s, things were still kind of uh, somewhat on an even keel. Women didn't quite know their power. Now they do. Yes, they and do. all it takes is them to point a finger and you're done. Royally screwed. They dated for five years and eventually got married. Okay. At the time they got married, he had been promoted to pilot. And she quit as a flight attendant and began working a digital design job for a marketing company. Ah, oh, okay, here we go. This is going to end badly, isn't it? If you're working for, you know, airline, doesn't really matter. Even as a pilot, you're not going to make as much money as somebody doing a digital design job for a marketing company if they're good at what they do. Uh, she uh, has the potential to start out earning him within five years. Correct, but you do have to realize it depends upon uh, the industry, yeah. how yes. the economy is doing, because marketing people are the first ones to get the axe. Yes, but as we all know... Uh, modern airlines and their pilots don't generally get along all that well. Yeah, they're not really paying those guys enough. A few years back, there was a plane crash, and they were trying to criticize the pilots for complaining about their pay on the little black box moments before they took the dirt dart. People are going to talk. It's just the way it goes. It had nothing to do with the performance of the aircraft. No. And the mere fact that they were talking about just before it crashed means it happened suddenly, mm -hmm. and there wasn't enough time to chatter about it. Yeah. They literally went from, you know, 600 miles an hour to zero instantaneously with uh, the benefit of a fiery crash and death. It's not like they were like, yeah, they don't pay me enough. Yeah, I'm so sick of it all. I'm going to burn this whole fucker to the ground. Ah! Yeah, no, That's I'm not, not saying, what happened. Yeah, I'm not saying that hasn't happened a few times because it, it might, quite possibly might have. Uh, yeah, I'm sure there. <laughs> <laughs> We're not saying anyway one way or another, just saying it's a possibility. As time went on, he found himself as a co-pilot for a very well-known major airline and then eventually full pilot for the same airline. During this time, they had four children 
and things seem to be going fine. But <clears throat> after working in the marketing job for about three years, she had delivered products to her company that generated millions of dollars for that company. See what I was saying here? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Her company was only paying her meager wages because she did not have a degree in anything, didn't have any certifications, and did not have any prior experience in that field. When she asked for raises, she was told it was not in the budget, so she told them to fuck off and quit. That's what you should do. Yeah, if you're generating millions and they don't want to thank you just because you don't have the proper degree... You move on. You need on. to leave. Practical experience is worth more than a degree a hundred times out of a hundred. Yeah, and, uh, and there's probably some company out there that will pay you what you're worth. Oh, hell yeah. Because of her low-level position, she wasn't asked to sign a non-compete, and she started her own company. All right. She then reached out to all of her former clients and those that contractually could, switched over with her because they liked the results that she was providing. See, this is why when you have a good employee who yeah. makes you millions of dollars... You keep them. You might want to financially compensate them to make sure they don't do this exact thing. Morons! Wow, I'm actually siding with the woman on this so one. So am I. So am I. It's almost like we respond to facts, logic, and reason and not gender politics. How dare you! As the two of them continued together with him flying his schedule, and she became a workaholic, her business grew. She became bored with the house they lived in. Here we go. Here we go. And kept on insisting that they upgrade their house to reflect the income which they had as they both increased in their respective professions. Just because you're making more money doesn't mean that you need to spend more money. That's what idiots do. Yes, it is. Uh, oh. But it's, fair, it's very common. Keeping up with the Joneses. Yep. Let's men do the same thing. For I would say not quite as bad. I've never been part of the whole sports car brigade. Oh, yeah. I can afford it, therefore I must have Maserati, Ferrari, whatever yeah. the shit. No, that's okay. Expensive. Do you have any idea what the maintenance on that thing is going to be the first time you accidentally, you know, bump your spoiler on a parking block? Oh, well, first of have all, have fun with that. I have a friend of mine that has a Ferrari, and it's like eleven hundred dollars to get a goddamn tune-up. There you go. No, thank you. Yeah, learn how to do your own maintenance on vehicles like that, gentlemen, if you have a brain in your skull. And quite literally, I was parking my 70, 75 Camaro next to his Ferrari. Yeah. And it, like three oil changes he had done in a year and a half would have like pretty much bought the basic car that I had at the time. Oh, wow. It, minus the engine and all of the souping up. Yeah, yeah. I was raised in a very frugal household so by a guy I. who made... Pretty decent at the time, upper middle class wages, despite not having a high school education. Uh -huh. And I was the last of four children, born nine and a half years after my next oldest sibling. So <sighs> I was considered spoiled by them, even though I was still being raised in a very financially frugal household by people who didn't really know what to do with money once they had it. But you learn a lot in that type of situation. Yeah, absolutely. You learn how to appreciate what you have. And uh, it does pay dividends down the road. So yep. yeah, I think your father did the right thing. Yes. Rich or poor, if you just give things to people, they don't appreciate them. Correct. That's why socialism can't work. <laughs> we sin. We have all kinds of negative aspects that they're just not yeah. going to go away. Yeah. In order for your socialist utopia to exist, all of that evil hairless monkey stuff would have to go away yeah. too. And it's not. No. Not. Anybody who has ever been the person who actually did the work in the high school group project knows that socialism can't work. After five different moves. Okay. Wow. The sixth of them were living in a 4,000 square foot house worth three quarters of a million dollars. Oh, my God. Oh. Wow. Keeping up with the Joneses and Jamal in one foul swoop. Ah. And they had their own Cessna single engine airplane, at which time he said he was done moving. Well, yeah. I wouldn't want to clean a 4,000 square foot house. No. Are you kidding I me? To be honest, where I am now in my life, if I was to ever get like massive amounts of money, I, I would probably still live the same. I yeah, me too. I just can't justify that kind of expense for just me. With him flying all the time and her working all the time, they weren't at home to even enjoy the house they had. 
So that's another reason why I don't understand why people would spend even half a million dollars on a place they literally go to eat, fuck, and sleep. If you work from home, it's different. You're home all the time. <clears throat> yeah. Most people who work like this and work for the man, they're home 10 hours a day, and eight of those, they're asleep. So If you're lucky. Yeah. Yeah, if you're lucky. Sleep eight exactly. hours. Exactly. I'm not lucky. I mean, it's a good <laughs> night for me if I get three and a half, four hours of sleep. I get my second sleep. Pop likes his second sleep like he likes his second breakfast. Well, I used to like second breakfast when I was fat. I don't do that. <laughs> hey, Pop, you want some Entenmann's? No! No coffee cake! <laughs> <laughs> it's hard to say no to Entenmann's, and especially your first girlfriend, Little Debbie. Oh, uh, that whore. That tasty bitch in a box. And you know what? I mean, the prices of Little Debbie cakes really haven't gone up that much. No, they haven't, and there's a good reason for that. Yeah, when I was, <laughs> that stuff is gut rot. Oh, it is, but as a child, I loved it. <laughs> well, like, yeah, my, we all I, did, yeah. I would have a good day if I was able to find enough returnable bottles to buy a box of Little Debbies mm -hmm. and a two-liter of Coke. You fat fuck! When they were home, they spent all their time catching up on lost time with their children. So that's another thing, too, is that if you are always spending money just so it looks like you have money, your children suffer. Because you have to keep going back to make more money just to spend it so you can keep up with the Joneses. Yeah, so you're basically taking formative time away from the children. Yeah, you're yeah. sacrificing witnessing your children's childhood so your friends will look up to you. Yep. And what does that mean when you're on your deathbed? Jack and shit, and Jack left town. Yep, doesn't mean crap. Because as soon as you fall on any financial hard times, those same friends who looked up to you will be the first ones to jet for the door. They will about face on your ass so fast it'll make your head spin. He believed it was pointless to move again. He was absolutely correct. Yep. By now, she had 54 employees, and her company had become a multi-million dollar per year net income company. Ooh. I mean, that's great for her. Yeah. You know, but by all means. But if you spend all that money up front, you're not going to have anything left for retirement when you can actually enjoy life. I mean, the only way that can contradict what you just said mm -hmm. is if they actually sell, if she sells it and then retires on the proceeds. Now, that's true. I mean, if it's worth that much money... Yeah, she could probably sell it for a pretty penny. Yeah, if that covers the debt that she's basically forced her family to accumulate so she can look like you Big Tits correct. Dragon. Yeah, keeping <laughs> up with the Joneses is very expensive. Yeah. Big Tits Dragon. Where the fuck did that come from? <laughs> There's something wrong with you. She still wasn't happy and began looking for yet another house. That is actually a symptom of uh, something missing from within. Basically, at this point, she has the same addiction makeup as a hoarder. Yes, I was just going to say that. Those people who just pack their homes with garbage and they become so attached to it that the thought of getting rid of it makes them scream and just lash out irrationally at everyone and everything. They isolate themselves away from family and friends and tell everybody to fuck off because, you know, the Happy Meal carton from 20 years ago is somehow more to them. Yeah, it's yeah. it is a mental illness and it sneaks up on you. I I myself I have my mother does a lot of the same stuff. Mm -hmm. I know, and I'm and I well. catch myself doing. Except I'm a war hoarder. Mm -hmm. She's just a hoarder yeah. or semi hoarder. I, I don't think she's there. You're preparing for something that looks very likely. Whereas you know, yes. keeping <clears throat> drive through garbage from three years ago literally helps no one. No, yeah, you're right. But let's jump right back in here. She presented him with an over 7,000 square foot house worth 2.5 million, and it was her dream house. Uh, they always say that. Of course. And she promised this is the last one. Uh -huh. Sure. Sure, sure. He said, no, I'm not moving again because I don't think this will ever end. Will there be an even bigger house later? And we don't need any more space. Now, if you have 4,000 square feet and you're not even home all the time... That's just a waste. You basically have a three-quarters of a million dollar dust collector that you occasionally sleep in. And, you know, maybe on your birthday you get to throw her a little bit of throat yogurt. Yeah, listen, this is not the path to happiness. Money never buys happiness. If it did, we wouldn't hear so often about famous folks who aren't dying suddenly but self-deleting. Yeah, because they're just purely miserable. Most of them are hooked on drugs. 
Yeah, well, meth and dicks. Shit, man. I found out I was rewatching uh, uh, with my kid last week. Don't tell mom the babysitter's dead from like 1992 or something. Okay. Christina Applegate, Danielle Harris is in it. There's not the oldest brother who becomes the chef, but the younger brother who's, you know, he's he's got his moon goddess Cynthia. You know, he's like 13. Buys her a diamond ring with the petty cash, what have you. That kid making that movie, 13 years old, already had a drug habit. Whoa. That was killing him. He OD'd at 23. Wow. Money does not buy you happiness. So getting the bigger house and having even more debt to your name, sure as hell, is not going to make these women happy. It's the journey. Yeah. Not the destination that that builds who you are and gives you the contentment. What these people are doing is they're always a destination they ride the high for a little while. Yep. Oh, I need another destination. Mm -hmm. I need instead of like looking back and appreciating the journey, she literally went from nothing to being snubbed by one company to start her own and and literally stomp out the uh, yeah. competition around her to grow that big. That is a great accomplishment it and is. a great journey. Absolutely. Find contentment in that. Yeah, you're not going to find contentment in a big, empty house, especially once the kids grow up and move out. Absolutely correct. It's going to feel even more empty, and then you're going to realize that you have spent your entire life chasing after something that never existed in the first place because the only place that you're going to find it is in here. hundred percent. You are the arbiter of your own happiness. Yeah. You either are, you make yourself happy, or you never will yeah. be. If you could buy happiness, I'm pretty sure we would have heard about it by now. Well, they, they, it's actually called drugs. <laughs> but it doesn't last that long. <laughs> Get the booger sugar. Yep. <laughs> yeah, 7,000 square foot of $2.5 million in debt can hold a lot of booger sugar. Yes, it can. <laughs> Think of all the toilets I could snort it off of. <laughs> Here we go. Oh, God, I used the wrong end. Ah! <laughs> she was sad because she didn't want to let this gem of a house go. So while he was flying, oh, fuck. Here we go. Divorce. She went and bought the house, paid for it in full with money that she had made for with her business. Okay. Now, if she can pay for it in full and it's not debt, Winning. Uh-huh. But uh, there's only I thought something. a marriage was two people making decisions for the betterment of their family. Well, I mean, listen, uh, there are guys who buy the pickup truck that the wife doesn't want. I mean, it happens. Yeah. But that that is a big uh I'm gonna that is a very big I'm gonna do it anyway kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Two point five million dollars in liquid assets. <sighs> Gone. Because she wants the bigger house. That's going to make her happy. That's, that's not how that works. She was able to do this because she had a general power of attorney for him because of his flight schedule and was intended for emergencies. Big mistake. I know lots of soldiers in my 33 years who deployed or were stationed elsewhere, TDY, where they couldn't take a family member who left the wife with the general power of attorney only to find out upon their return their house is mortgaged up to 125%. The money was used to buy motorcycles for dudes that were coming over banging her. Oh. And quite literally, they returned home to having to file for bankruptcy and get divorced. So next time somebody says not all women are like that, they're correct. Not all women will ruin your life, but... But when they decide to... Every woman can. Yeah, they really do it. He still refused to move, and she refused to sell her dream house. He revoked the POA to prevent her from selling either house without him, and they lived separately that way for a year. All right. The houses were only five miles apart, so the children alternated weeks living with mom and then dad. They were able to attend the same school regardless of where they were staying, and at the 18-month point, <coughs> she filed for divorce. Okay. They still have the joint custody arrangement they created together. All right. They're still good friends and are raising the children jointly. That's a really good outcome, to be honest. But let's just be completely honest about this. This woman torched her family 
and threw it into potential upheaval because she wanted a bigger house. For keeping up with the Joneses or Jamal. First of all, it wasn't needed. No. It's completely pointless, especially if you're working so much you rarely see your home, let alone your children. She has been dating, serial monogamous style, but can't keep a man. Well, because she's Shocker. probably in her 40s. Yeah. And listen, the, the data is out there. Yeah. Men like what they like, and quite literally, a lot of these women, if they're lucky enough to get a man in their 20s, that man will only see her as she was when she was 20, even when she you know ages out and, and gets saggy and baggy. Yep. All right. Now, say that same 20-year-old woman gets rid of that dude at when she's 40. Mm. Now, she needs another guy to come along and basically visualize her the same way, and it gets harder and harder the older they get. Yep. That's just the way it is. They're, they're, we're not being you know, chauvinist pigs here. We're just telling you the yep. way the world works. But that's not all. Not oh. only is she going to have a harder time because she's used up and worn out, she also makes way too much money. And as we all know, women want men who out-earn them. Yes. If she can afford a $2.5 million house cash out of pocket... The chance of her finding a guy like that is next to zero. It's at her age, good luck. Yeah. Let, let, let's pretend that's not true. Yeah. Good, good I mean, freaking Bezos' ex-wife got divorced within a year, what, no, thir- not 13 even. months? <laughs> 13 months. <laughs> she made herself into a boss and can no longer submit to anyone, including her army of yes women. I think only four of her employees are men. The men she is attracted to don't put up with her masculine personality for very long and leave. Yep. Men that will submit to her are invisible to her. There you That's go. very typical, actually. And she's still not happy. Her current LTR also owns a business, but I have no idea what that is. I can't see her ever giving up her house unless it's for something even bigger, and her relationship seems to have two heads. <laughs> wow. I shake my head every time I think about this happening to my friend because hundreds of millions of women in the world would kill for a good looking six foot five. Wow. Late 40s airline pilot for a husband. WTF. I mean, look at we've had Will Smith. Yeah. He literally had a mental breakdown on camera in front of the entire country. Mm -hmm. You know, in the grand scheme of things, it's just a slap. I got it. Yeah. But he, he literally tried for decades to make his, his wife happy, and it didn't work. Don't be that guy who's bending over backwards and making all the concessions to try to make a woman happy. Yep. Either they're able to make themselves happy or they're not. You're not going to be able to come in there and make a difference. You can try, but if that, that woman is not happy at her core or doesn't know how to generate her own happiness, it's going to fail. Every single time. Every single time. Just give it enough time, sooner or later, it's going to go right off the cliff. And it just goes to show you that it doesn't matter if you're the beta cuck or the alpha chad. You cannot make these women happy if they refuse to make themselves happy. These women are being indoctrinated pretty much from kindergarten on. There you go. And a lot of times that indoc is is not going to reverse or turn off. Nope. So this woman is probably going to keep on her... uh, Keep on her trajectory until she, uh, you know, is on her deathbed and then go, oh, I should have done that. And then it's just too late. Yeah, because by then, in all likelihood, her kids are not going to want to have anything to do with her because she chose a house over her family. And I'm sorry. Well. That sort of mindset doesn't just go away overnight with an I'm sorry. No, it doesn't. That, that, that's really tough to come yeah. back from. And the damage that's been done to those kids can never be undone. You can tell that this woman had no... Uh, gratitude no there's no gratitude it's, it's yeah. all entitlement yeah it's all entitlement with i mean if you're not great listen you got to be grateful to the universe for the shit that you do have yeah because the, you that are way, born into this world entitled to nothing that's absolutely correct if you're grateful maybe the universe will give you more yeah but if you're not mm-hmm. it's like treading water you don't go anywhere exactly and sooner or later you run out of energy mm-hmm. and you die sorry leftoids but housing is not a human right Healthcare is not a human right. None of those things are human right. The only thing this world owes you is a death, and that's it. You don't like it? Kiss my ass. That's the way the world works. He, on the other hand, 
has remarried with prenuptial agreements. She's 20 years younger. Wow. Submissive, fit, friendly, feminine, foxy, and fertile, and a strong eight. They're expecting in March of this year. Wow, okay. So she's pretty close now. Yeah. He's very happy, still has the same 4,000 square foot house, and his airplane both paid for. Winning. I like That's that. how you retire in style, my friend. He flies his family to any place in the U.S. on a regular basis with a wife who is able to drop the housework and be at his side. Here are the truths wrapped up here by Iron Riddle himself. Every relationship has a dominant and a submissive role. If they don't, they go off the rails. Yep. Two dominant roles, 100% of the time, is a two-headed monster and never works. It's two scrotums. Too many cooks in the kitchen. That's We've heard that expression a yeah. million times. Women don't fall in love the way men do. They fall into his frame. If her perception of her status becomes higher than his, she will fall out of frame and be unhappy because she is not attracted to something less than she perceives herself to be. Yeah, I know what I'm worth. Okay. Yeah. Let me know how that works out for you. And last but not least, and take note, body positivity slacktivists, you cannot force yourself to be attracted to something you are not. You cannot manufacture burning desire. No, you cannot. And you can't shame it into existence because of social beauty standards that we should all rise above. Wham. Yeah, get out of here. <laughs> this is a great story. Yes, it is. I like this. I mean, it could have been a story of absolute <laughs> triumph. I mean, the, he's doing his deal, making yeah. good money as a you know airline pilot. Got his own private jet, four thousand square foot house, the the hot wife, the four kids. Yeah, well, I, I'm gonna, I'm just gonna put this out there. As time progresses, the ex-wife is gonna become more and more bitter, and at yep. some point she will lash out at him. Yes, she will. So he needs to uh, be on his guard. Yeah, women like this. Because they put so much stock in the materialism that they believe is going to make them happy. When that doesn't work, they have to fall back on blaming the people who refused to support their decisions. And that's exactly what's going to happen. He's, she's going to lash out at him and the kids if they refuse to fall in line. That's very common. Good fucking luck. Well, I mean, she's listen, at her, uh, she's a very accomplished all right, she's on a trajectory. Uh, good luck, uh, good luck to her for that. I mean, yeah, th that is Make awesome great. accomplishments. Yeah. I'm not taking that away yeah. from her. Unfortunately. This woman does not seem to realize that she can make all the money in the world. Yes, there are penthouses in boxed wine in Catland. Stop. <laughs> Don't touch me there. This is my no no square. Stop. <laughs> I'm just saying. Yeah, absolutely correct. You might not be b drinking boxed wine. You might get the you know the dumb hair and yawn, and you know you, maybe you don't have cats. Maybe maybe you have a maid who can clean the shit out of the litter box for you. At the end of the day, no one is gonna be there around your deathbed because you shit on everybody who didn't want to support your materialistic decisions. Best case scenario, she she dies of a coronary. There you go. That way. Oh, yeah, women can work themselves to death just as easily as a man And they're can. starting sure. to do that, too. Yeah, they are, and they're realizing how much it sucks, and you did it to yourselves. 40 to 80 is a long fucking time. But before you go down that path from 40 to 80 all alone and you know investing all your money in boxed wine and kitty litter, one thing you can do is click out the link tree down in the Meat Gazer box, and if you enjoy this content you feel like donating to us, it helps keep us independent from the big tech oligarchs. And if you have stories, send them in. If they're good enough, we'll do an episode on them. Uh, case in point, that's why you're here. Yep. We'll see you guys next time. Take it easy.